The Google Pixel 2 has been my daily driver for the better part of a month, and to allude to my results of this video, it is a fantastic device. One that has given me a smooth transition from switching to Android after three years of being with iOS. This is my in-depth review of the Google Pixel 2. The exterior design consists of aluminum, but has some kind of thick coating on top that makes the phone very easy to hold. The design itself is very sleek and low profile, but I find it to be more on the elegant side. I like to put a skin on everything I own, so I wrapped my Pixel in the dragon skin from Dbrand with marble around the glass panel. The front consists of the 5 inch 1920 by 1080p AMOLED display, the dual front facing speakers, and the 8 megapixel front facing camera that supports a resolution of up to 1080p. On the back, there's a fingerprint sensor sensor and the 12.2 megapixel rear-facing camera that supports a resolution of up to 4K at 30 frames per second. On the right, you'll find the volume rocker and the sleep-wake button. On the left, you'll find the SIM card tray. On the bottom, you'll find the USB-C port for charging, transferring data, and inserting your USB-C adapter to a 3.5mm jack to suffice for the annoyance of a missing headphone jack. This device features a 5-inch 1920x1080p AMOLED display. As I just mentioned a bit ago, most Android flagships have higher resolution displays than the normal, smaller Pixel 2. This, however, is a fantastic display. I haven't experienced any of the issues others have noted from the Pixel 2 XL. It's colorful, though not overly saturated out of the box, and at this size, it looks incredibly sharp. The camera on the Pixel 2 is without a doubt one of the best features that debuted with it this generation. This is coming from both the rear and the front-facing cameras, of course. The 8-megapixel front-facing camera performs very well, giving you a resolution of up to 1080p. There are many settings available in order for you to customize the results that you get from pictures and videos. Though I prefer to use the front-facing camera in portrait mode, it does a great job at blurring out the background, keeping the subject in focus, which is great. As good as the front-facing camera is, however, the rear-facing camera is among the best that I've tested. Portrait mode looks even better through it, and what catches my attention so much as how smooth video is. Thanks to the aggression delivered by its software stabilizer, it is difficult to beat. The front-facing serial speakers are another welcome addition to this iteration, and they sound very good. They are loud and punchy, so they deliver a fantastic music listening experience, as well as constant consumption. Listen. So as to gaming, the Pixel 2 crushes any game I've thrown at it. In Fire Emblem Heroes, for example, performance is always smooth. The experience has been very clean without any records of hitching or stuttering. Middle Earth Shadow of War is my substitute for when I'm not home and can't play the PC version. But anyway, performance is still fantastic, and I haven't seen any signs of slowing down. Again, very nicely done. If you're into emulating, and you'll find that the Pixel 2 still handles that very nicely. I can, however, only speak on the performance with Persona 3, since I'm trying to catch up with the franchise. This is running on the PPSS PP emulator, and it handles it beautifully. As for Geekbench, I let my Pixel run the benchmark for a few minutes until I finally got my results. It scored 1915 in single core and 6335 in multi core. Other awesome features that have made it to the Pixel 2 include its water resistance rating of IP67. This means that it will easily survive getting splashed on by most liquids without damage. Fast charging is still prominent with the Pixel 2. If for some reason my phone has a low percentage and the day isn't fully over, which doesn't happen very often, more on that soon. Leaving it charging for about an hour will get me to near 100%, around so, from 20% at least from my experience, that is. Which leads to battery life. The Pixel 2 has to deal with Bluetooth being turned on 24-7 because I have it paired with my CTE Quartz. Content video streaming and web browsing while still streaming these videos. A normal day also includes music streaming and taking pictures. The Pixel will easily last me through the day morning to end of the night, with still some battery to spare, which is very impressive. As for usability, I've been an iPhone user for almost three years after having a bad experience with Android in the past. It's been a little bit of a challenge getting back to learning how to use it, and how to really make the most out of it. However, I don't think I'll be going back to iOS for a very long time. 
It is true what people have said about stock Android being smoother and easy to navigate through, and while still being very inviting to new users, the camera is fantastic and launches very quickly when needed and Google Assistant can be triggered through a squeeze to the phone now, which has made me use it a lot more than I would have used Siri before. I've spoken wonders about the Pixel 2 up to this point, but unfortunately, it's not perfect. Not having a headphone jack is very annoying, and carrying this little adapter is a bit frustrating, but luckily, I haven't lost it. Still, I really miss this damn thing, since I am just not ready to go wireless yet, but it was a compromise I agreed to make so I can use stock Android and a more adequately sized phone. There were some other things that also would have been nice to have, like expandable storage, some implementation of virus scanning or facial recognition, and very few other things. But quite frankly, I feel like I've got a mostly complete package. To finally conclude this video, I'd like to say that the Pixel 2 has been one of the fastest phones I've ever used. I do not care for thin bezels or a curved display, but I do care for a good-looking display, which the Pixel definitely has. And even though many would argue that it looks outdated, I think that for its functionality aspect, it is definitely worth it. I personally really like the design and I'm happy to finally say that I will stick to Android for a good while. For more content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and to stay updated when a new video comes out, make sure to click on that bell and enable notifications. For links to everything featured in this video, expect to find those in the description. This has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy.